It's a special Saturday night edition of Time About the Movies, a.k.a. My allergies are still bothering me, and I forgot to do an episode on Thursday, so this is, so this is now a bonus episode to keep me back on track. Uh, there won't be a movie stop today, by the way, so you're just going to get a new Time About the Movies today. I'll have another movie stop episode for you next week, but you're not here for that. You're here for t Time About the Movies. It's March 23rd, 1990, and we begin today with one of the biggest comedies of all time, Richard Gere and Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Would you believe it was actually hard to find a trailer that didn't have the Pretty Woman song in there by Roy Orbison? Uh, good marketing campaign, but try to look for a trailer on YouTube, try to avoid copyright claims. It's It, w it wasn't easy, but it wasn't hard either. I was able to find at least that TV spot there, so... Uh, Pretty Woman. What more can you say about this movie that hasn't already been said already? Richard Gere, Julia Roberts. It's a fun little comedy. It's a fun comedy. Gere and Roberts, they just have this great chemistry working off each other so well. Uh, Julia Roberts is a ton of fun in this. This is the movie that broke her out as the star. Even though she did have an Academy Award nomination the year prior to this with Steel Magnolias, this was actually the movie that launched her into superstardom because she, every movie that she would do after this point made money like it made so it was there was a stretch where she was actually one of the biggest box office stars in the in the in the country at the time um but yeah what can i say about this movie that hasn't already been said already it's a fun romantic comedy it's a little formulaic at times it can be a little eh, it can be a little generic a little predictable but it is what it is it, it knows what it's trying to be it's not trying to be something so groundbreaking or so inventive or amazing but it is still a ton of fun, and really, it was one of the biggest. Hit, it was one of the biggest hits of 1990. There's going to be a ton of movies that we'll look at that just just stuck around for the longest time with the biggest release, with the biggest release of the year, the biggest comedy of all time. We'll get to when we get to November, and I think you know what I'm talking about. But but uh, yeah, Pretty Woman, fun little comedy. Not really. I don't think it's one of the greatest romantic comedies of all time. I think I've seen a lot better ones, but. It's a ton of fun. You got a great cast here. Gary Marshall, this is him at his best. And, uh, yeah. Pretty Woman. What more can you say, bud? Pretty Woman. Uh, now on to a different kind of comedy. Michael Caine starring in uh, Shock to the System. One of the many, many dark black comedies we got during this time period. And most of them were not very good. But then you had some that were actually kind of really good, like War of the Roses, and Shock the System is kind of in the middle. It's a fun movie. If you've ever seen American Psycho, Michael Caine's character definitely has a lot of Patrick Bateman vibes in this movie. Uh, it doesn't go as completely insane as American Psycho did, but it's a ton of fun. I like Michael Caine playing this sadistic asshole, He's kind of, and a sadistic villain, kind of, antagonist, if you want to say, but... Yeah, it's a fun movie. It's a fun, dark black comedy that a lot, a lot of people really don't talk about all that much, but it's a really good movie. It's got a great cast, Elizabeth McGovern, Peter Rieger, Susie Kurtz, Jenny Wright, and it knows what it's trying to be. It can be as dark as it wants to be. It doesn't go to the insane levels of some other comedies like War of the Roses, but uh, it's fun for what it is. It's actually a, pre it's a pretty fun movie. I don't think a lot of people really talk about it, but they definitely should check this one out. If you like Michael Caine movies... And want to see him in one of his best underrated performances. A Shock to the System is definitely that movie for you. So let's go to move on to the last movie. And that is The Fourth War. So is this kind of like what Peter said on Family Guy. That World War IV was going to be so intense. That World War III is not going to matter. Although he technically did say five. And we technically still haven't had a World War III. Even though what's going on in Russia and Ukraine at this, the time of this recording is kind of getting to that point, but um, that's 22 years from when this movie came out. Uh, we had the fourth war here. I guess there, I guess maybe the third war was Vietnam, and this is the Cold War, I guess, because this takes place in the 1980s. I don't know. Uh, the fourth war with uh, Roy Scheider, Jim Pro Jurgen Proshnow. I don't even know if I pronounced that name right, but, um, but uh, yeah, we have this movie. John Frankenheimer directed it based off of a concept that came from a quote by Al Albert Einstein who said, I know not what weapons World War III be, will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. And, um, I guess that was an idea for a movie, and it makes for a pretty good movie, too. It's one that, 
it's because maybe it's because it's candid films. People automatically assume it's going to be either a really bad movie or a cheesy, is or a cheesy fun movie. But this is actually not a bad movie for them. It's one of the few movies that candid films did that was actually kind of really good. Like you'd have something like Delta Force or Runaway Train, and now you have this movie, and it's actually really good. It's got a really good cast to it. Uh, Scheider and Parks now Tim Reed from Frank's Place at the time, uh, Harry Dean Stanton. Uh, Dale Dye, Laura Harris. Uh, it's shot beautifully. It's got a soundtrack by the Bill Conti, the guy who did the score for Rocky, and it's John Frankenheimer. John Frankenheimer doesn't usually he doesn't usually do as bad as he could have as he's done with the movies that he's made. He's made very few bad movies, in my opinion. But when he makes a bad movie, it's a pretty bad movie. But this is actually not one of his bad movies. It's actually one of his better movies. It's one of those movies where it's just like. An interesting psychological character study of these two guys just getting ready to go after each other. Some of the lines of dialogue here are a little... Feel a little dumbed down, if you want to call it that. Like, the, like there are lines in here that are just like, okay, you dumb this down so you can appeal to your typical audience. But it's a decent... Thr this is a decent thriller. It's a movie that... It's once again another movie that I'd say, if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's definitely worth watching. Uh, the Fourth War, from Roy Scheider and Jor Jorgen Porchnow, and directed by John Frankenheimer. And with that said, that's going to wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next time around, we have two movies to look at. One of those movies would help set the tone for the rest of the decade, and that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which ended up becoming not only one of the biggest hits of the year, but for a long time, one of the biggest independent movies ever made. And we'll delve more into that the next time around. We've also got Dana Carvey making his leading feature film debut after his time on Saturday Night Live. Opportunity knocks, so we'll look at both of those movies tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another new episode. So thank you for watching, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and until then, take care.